So understanding how to draw proportionately really is an important thing when we're when we're sketching freehand in particular, particularly in architecture. Um, I'll give you for instance, let's just say uh, you've got um, a wall that's nine feet high and you've got, um, it's also maybe 12 units long. So in other words, it's nine over 12, or if we just make that a little bit more simple, we can just say it's three to four, which we have right here. So you don't just make a random sort of, oh, okay, it's, it's like that, my wall is like that. It really is important to pay attention to those proportions. So taking something like this, and we can do it again, and you can draw any line. What I'm now going to draw is, is, is the height of that wall. And we're gonna call this the three, the three wall. And I know now that I have to make it four units long. So if that's the case, let's start off with that square. Going back to that square as much as we can. I'm eyeballing it here. Or if, if you're not comfortable with that right now, you know, just good ways of measuring it. Just take, um, take your eraser, for instance, and just kind of measure off your distance and see uh, if, if you've actually achieved that or not. A little simple tools to, to help you do that. But be deliberate about it. Be really careful about making those proportions right. Because once you've got that base proportion right, and right now I'm feeling as if that's kind of coming off diagonal, so I am going to correct it. And these little things do make a difference, so I am going to correct that there. So I've got my three, three by three. I am starting off with a square there. And as I did before, if I want to achieve one more, I now have to break this into three. So here is something, this is another trick that is really important to learn, and is that's how to break something into thirds. We learned it a little bit earlier in the, in the last video, and that's whereby the diagonals still count in this if I'm going to divide this up into thirds. And that will be, that forms the, a really important point. That is my, my, uh, my bisecting of that line. From there, what I do is I draw that diagonal from the center to the corner, and right where it hits that diagonal is a third, like so. So I've now taken that square and I've now created a region which is a third and I can do it on the other side. And there you go there, you have another third. So in doing so, as it hits that diagonal, this is a point here and this is a point here. So I can take this point now and just draw it straight across. And as you can see, I'm starting to develop three squares across. And again, I want that to be a third there. So I can do a couple simple things. I can just divide that in half, but that gets sort of convoluted. Or I can take a look at where this crossed that diagonal, and that's a natural third through there. And that's just because I started with a square. So now I've taken something that I've deemed to be three, and I've broken it into one by one squares. So three squares by three squares. And then that same distance applies here. If I want to now make this three quarters, I'll just extend that line like so. And now what I'm going to do is take the diagonal that created this square or through these squares and draw toward myself, extend that up there. And sure enough, what I have is a rectangle that in, let's just say in regular terms, represents a wall that is a three to four proportion, or in this case, it's a nine foot high ceiling by a 12 foot length wall in here. So there you go. And again, it's really important to be very, very deliberate about your proportions when you're starting to design things because in nature and in architecture, there's no reason to honestly use actual dimensions if you have a really fantastic sensibility toward proportions.